Shana Tova, and thank you for joining us online today as we begin this new year. What comes to mind when you think of the king? I'm guessing for some of you it's Elvis, and for others it may be Jonathan Goff playing King George in Hamilton. Some of you might think of current monarchs of the world, from the Queen of England to the royal family of Saudi Arabia. But I'm also willing to bet that far fewer of us hear the king and immediately think about God. Yet at this moment, on this Rosh Hashanah morning, the image and metaphor of God as king is supposed to be on our minds. We call out to Hamelech, the king, and to Avinu Malkenu, our father, our king, to answer us. But I'll confess, I have never easily related to this kind of language of kingship or royalty for God. Many of you know that I'm far more comfortable using a term like holy one or source of life than I am with king or lord or even queen or ruler. But as a rabbi, you see, that theological struggle is starting to become a minor professional hazard. After all, how could I not find some meaning in that image? that metaphor that captivated our ancestors' minds for centuries. Think about it. Our sacred texts, prayers and blessings, they consistently use melech among God's many names. Just about every blessing we say uses melech ha'olam, king of the world. And at this season of holy days in particular, that king language is even more prominent. But despite years, actively participating in Jewish life, from camp to college to rabbinical school, despite my continued learning, it really remained quite difficult for me to find personal meaning and connection in that king language. As I reflected on it, I suspected that some of the challenge relates to the gendered nature of that particular image for God. Our reform movement has long used the more gender-neutral phrases, ruler or sovereign of the world, instead of king, melech haolam. And liberal Jews today often adapt the Hebrew to use feminine language for royalty, malkat haolam, perhaps, queen of the world, instead of king. But another part of my discomfort comes from the fact that it's such a fickle, human archetype to apply to something like God. Kings, queens, royalty call to mind specific human rulers. They make us think of power and politics, of wealth and war, even ego, tyranny, or oppression. Not usually the way we like to think about God. And human kings? Well, they seem to have the power to act directly upon their kingdom, rewarding those who praise them and please them, punishing those who do not. Of course, many of us don't really believe that God works in this way in our world. And even if we did, we'd be more likely to fear that God than to want to give thanks or celebrate a new year. But this year... I've had a frighteningly good teacher encourage me to find deep layers of meaning in that metaphor for God as king. That teacher's name, of course, is COVID-19. Because it turns out there's nothing quite like a global pandemic taking place in an election year amidst a modern day civil rights movement and increasingly extreme and frequent weather events in our world to remind us that we humans do not reign over the world. We are not the kings and queens, the sovereign rulers of the universe. There are forces beyond our control that exist, that have always existed, and that will always exist. Of course, that was true long before this coronavirus pandemic. Natural disasters, seasonal flus, chronic illnesses, car accidents, good old traffic. 
And despite all these things that were always beyond our control, many of us had familiar routines. We created expectations and plans that we could quite often turn into a reality. And in that sense, we sometimes may have felt like kings or queens or rulers of our own world. We could sort of see into the future, looking towards a vacation or a holiday and casually deciding to meet friends for a meal or a drink. We didn't think twice about running back to the store when we needed something. And many of us, perhaps even most of us, felt some degree of control, of being sovereign in our own lives. And it's quite difficult in this moment to be reminded and to be reminded so violently that we are not always in control. There does indeed exist a living, sovereign force of creation before whom we can stand in gratitude, yes, and in fear or awe, yirah, as it's called in Hebrew these days. Because these days, our season of holidays, are the days of awe as we face our lack of control before that king of all. But just as we acknowledge that we are powerless and small, we commit to own the power and the control that we do have through our process of tshuva. Our process of repentance and return helps us acknowledge our limitations while remaining audacious enough to believe that our actions matter. We honor that ruling force of the universe by trying to be the ruling forces of ourselves. And so that's how I'm relating to God as king, as sovereign, as queen this year. I'm seeking to build that sense of self-sovereignty. I give thanks to Melech Chai Vekayam, the enduring king of life, as it says in our Mode Ani blessing each morning. But I also acknowledge that I'm not in charge. And in the very same breath, I affirm that my choices and my actions can still be my power as I face a new day and a new year. We can all do this by taking the reins in our own lives. We can live up to our identity as beings created in the image of that king of all. These opportunities abound in every aspect of our life. With the coronavirus, for instance, we might see it in our choices to practice clean hand hygiene, to wear masks when we're out, to follow the medical and scientific experts and minimize the risk of transmission. Our choices help us own the power we do have, even though we don't control things like a virus or the weather. When we take action to learn about our implicit biases, is another example. When we support voting rights, when we give tzedakah to worthy causes or contribute our time to our friends and family in need, when we do any of those things, our choices help build sovereignty in our own lives. As part of our morning liturgy, bringing Torah into our midst, we sing Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Loch Leolam Ba'ed. We call to mind God as King, Melech, who reigned, Malach, and does reign, Yimloch, for all eternity. If I'm being honest, I had never given that line of our Torah service much thought. I just, I like to sing it with that triumphant fanfare of Solomon Sulzer's. But this year, in focusing on God as King, that moment is taking on new meaning for me. You see, as we bring Torah into our midst and we study its words and we meditate on it day and night, we do so because we know and we trust and we hope that our actions matter. We know that taking that self-sovereignty is vital. Our sacred teachings help us offer those guideposts by which to live and act in the world. And so at that time in our service, we have the power and we balance that chutzpah to believe 
that our actions matter with the knowledge that there is Adonai who reigns over all and that we can be humble before that force and sovereign. Adonai Melech, God is still king, even though we're doing our best to live and learn and love and improve ourselves in our world. Adonai Malach, God has always ruled, creating light and darkness and setting our world into motion. Adonai Himloch Leolam Va'ed. Adonai will reign for all eternity. And our lives may be a small piece of that everlasting grandeur of creation. This year, as we hear the sound of shofar, let it be a voice that reminds us. We are not rulers of this world. But let us try to be present with that power of the universe that rules in all space and time. May we embrace that feeling of being powerless. May we lean into our sense of yirah, of fear and awe, as we stand before that miraculous force of the universe. And let the shofar also wake us up every day, bravely living with the hope and determination that our choices matter. Shana Tova.